I've got two related points. First, um, I think it's telling that you didn't really respond to that earlier gentleman's question about whether your rhetoric was just empty criticism, uh, whether you can propose actual practical things that you can do to change things. It's all well and good to jump up and down and pontificate and another to do something about it. Many of your proposals sound very vague and overly idealistic to me. This is related to my main question. After so many decades of activism, why have groups of your persuasion accomplished so very little? Isn't it time to reconsider your tactics? Indeed, groups of uh, 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 your persuasion are guilty of many of the same sins as your opponents, like abuse of evidence, immoral alliances of convenience, moral blindness, over idealism, scapegoating. And the vagueness and oversimplicity of your proposals, I think, is part of this. Isn't it time to reconsider the tactics that you're using? And that's all well, that's question. I assume that you heard what I was saying, uh, you know, at the beginning of my talk when I was talking about the congressional investigations uh, into uh, selling arms or making arms uh, accessible to Iraq. And I wonder what your comment is on that. Uh, whether you consider that rhetorical, or I didn't, uh, I don't have a sense that you have a response to that. Well, I mean, I, I, I'm familiar. I, I've seen some of the the, the the stuff going on, but you know, it's. Where's the, where's the results? What, what, what's changed? I mean, we're, we're still there. Nothing has actually changed. And, you know, it's, it's just, uh, I just wonder if, if it's time to reconsider the, the tactics. I mean, you know. Well, it's time to reconsider the policies. That's my point. What does that mean? What does that mean? You have to change these things. And if you want to change these things, it's not enough just to say that they need to be changed and to criticize them. What do you propose? And a lot of people, who are very moral people uh, don't necessarily agree with, with some of your proposals because they don't think they're practical and they think that, yeah, you know, okay. the cancellation, for example, of, of say, Al Gore with, with George Bush is, I think, part of the evidence of this. You know, there are a lot of people who agree in principle with a lot of your priorities but think that lumping these two people together is part of the reason why nothing gets done. Okay, look, uh, you're saying a lot of things. I want to be more specific. I, um, the point of my talk in general is to say that we need to know the policies that are pursued openly. Now I'm not talking about covertly. And that knowing them is an act in itself. And the production of uh, the, the attempt to confront that in, to confront that data, which is open, uh, is a significant political act. And that knowledge in this sense is a form of resistance. So if you're asking me about specific forms of political organization, I defer on that question. My remarks were, were uh, really designed to uh, get some reaction and to get to, to be able to share some thinking with you and with others about how it is possible that information which has, of the kind that I read, which was presented before Congress over an extended period of time, and that involved virtually every arm of Congress, seems to have disappeared. That those policies, the policies of arming the very, the very regime that a few years later would be denounced by some of the same people in Congress, and apparently by sufficient numbers of um, people outside of Congress, without any apparent without remembering of uh, the extent to which we had strengthened that regime, that strikes me as very problematic. So I'm suggesting there, if you want to call it an exercise, uh, an act of uh, disciplined examination that can go on within a university setting or outside of a university setting to have the benefit of literacy and access, I consider that a very important step in a political awareness which I regard as uh, a form of political action. I agree it's an important step, but it's, it's just, it's a necessary but not a sufficient condition for changing things. And I think this is a lesson that really needs to sink in, because I've heard people sometimes express proposals, and the proposals seem very naive and vague to me. So I'm still waiting to hear about that. That's the end. I'm not sure what are the naive proposals that you are talking about. Uh, are you saying it's a naive proposal to suggest that we uh, withdraw from Iraq as fast as possible? Is that a naive proposal? To be perfectly honest, yes. What's that? To be perfectly honest, yes. It's naive. Well, it's you think that it's naive? Yes. Well, uh, Not because it's wrong, but because how do you do it? Do you do? How do you do it? You use ships and planes. <laughs> you, do it, you do it the way you did in Vietnam. Really. The same argument was made during the Vietnam War, right? 
And during the Vietnam War, the argument was made, no, we can't, and the word always used was precipitously. After you've been in a, in a place, you've got a place for five years, and you get out as quickly as you can, is that precipitous? Do we get them to change their policies? That's your missing point. All right, you're, here's what you're, you're saying, I think. You're, you're saying, well, we haven't changed policy, right? Therefore, we failed. Therefore, there's something wrong with what we're saying. Maybe. There's something, well, you have to examine what you're saying and see if it's right or wrong. I examine what we're saying about withdrawal from Iraq, and I conclude we're saying the right thing. But you say, but our policy hasn't changed. And I point to the fact that any time you look at any movement that is going on, before it succeeds, it has failed. And, uh, and, and you look, you know, you can, you can look at the black people in the South after they've been doing this and that and the other thing and nothing has changed and say, you see, you must do something different. Your tactics, there must be something wrong with your tactics. You fail. No. <laughs> the tactics of protest and resistance and, and spreading knowledge and uh, agitation and civil disobedience, th those, those tactics are the tactics that have been used historically and are still being used. And there are no uh, really uh, glamorous new tactics that are required in order to bring about change. What is required is persistence and patience. Not the patience of passivity, but the patience of action, continued action. Because historically, yes, you, every movement before it succeeds has failed. And you look at the movement against the war in Vietnam, and you say, after five years, the policy has not changed. And then uh, you wake up one day, and the policy is changing. And uh, so I suggest that you don't despair, and you don't think that we have failed. Uh, I mean, you look at a change in public opinion. Uh, you look at the fact that even the media have begun, in their own cautious way, to criticize the war. Uh, you look at the fact that the, we have presidential candidates who, even if they're not calling for immediate withdrawal, at least for uh, calling for ending the war in some way in Iraq. And I would argue that, no, the movement, the tactics, uh, are succeeding. And the policy hasn't changed, but what we have to do is continue and persist in the saying the things that we're saying, doing the things that we're doing. Winter soldier hearings are taking place in Maryland. The GIs are more and more uh, coming out against the war. Uh, this, was, this was the process in Vietnam. And when enough GIs came out against the war and enough people demonstrated, uh, yes, the administration had to think twice about whether it was going to continue the war. So I would say, don't feel bad. Yeah, I would just add that the gap between the claims about the war and the current situation are being exposed. They're not being exposed in, uh, you know, minority websites. They're being exposed in the Washington Post. They're being exposed in the New York Times. I'm talking about the failure of uh, search. I'm talking about the failure of uh, the, the, expo the expose of claims as to why the U.S. went into Iraq. I'm talking about the numbers of wounded and the evidence of uh, the Iraqi casualties and what that means.